The following video is brought to you by Mycogen Seeds. Meet the demand for Omega-9 oils with Nexera Canola Hybrids from Mycogen Seeds. Hi there, my name is Naeem Culver and I am Extension Area Specialist for Soil Health with NDSU Langdon Research Extension Center. I'm a member of NDSU Soil Health Initiative Group tasked to help growers and landowners solve their soil health issues in North Dakota. The objective of this hands-on demo is to explain the two most common types of water movements within the soils. As salts also move with the soil water, so it is very important to understand how water moves within the soils. Both of these water movements are affected by different soil types and the size of the soil pores. Size of the soil pores play an important role in determining the speed and direction of the soil water. Sand has the largest size soil particles and pores, whereas clay has the smallest size for soil particles and pores. To represent sand and clay soils in this hands-on demo, we are using beads of two different sizes, large and small. The first type is the gravitational movement of the soil water that happens only downward into the soils with the help of gravitational forces. This generally happens right after a heavy rainfall when all of the soil pores are filled with the water. This type of water is called gravitational water which is considered excessive soil water and is not available to the plants. This is the water which leaches excessive salts or sodium out of the plant root zone. So, we would like to have better movement of gravitational water or in other words, better soil water infiltration. The better the soil drainage is, the faster will be the movement of gravitational water. Also, once this excessive water will move downward into the soil, oxygen will start coming back into the soil pores voided by the gravitational water. The second type is the capillary rise of the soil water that happens against the forces of gravity with the help of adhesion and cohesion forces. Adhesion is the attraction of water molecules for soil particles and here is represented by the beads, whereas cohesion is the attraction of water molecules for each other. Capillary rise can happen in any direction from wet to dry areas. Capillary rise is the main carrier for bringing excessive salts or sodium either at the soil surface or within the plant root zone in North Dakota. In capillary rise, soil water moves like a thin film above the groundwater level. In a typical sandy soil, capillary rise will be very quick but will not rise very high above the groundwater level. However, due to the larger size of the soil pores, gravitational water movement or the soil water infiltration be very fast. In a clay soil, the capillary rise will be very slow versus a sandy soil. However, with time it will rise very high above the groundwater level. As per a study, it can rise as high as 9 feet. The gravitational water movement or the downward movement of the soil water will also be very slow in a clay soil versus sand. This is due to the smaller size of the soil pores because of which the forces of adhesion and cohesion will be very strong. Management of saline or saline sodic soils is mostly related to the management of soil water. That includes rain or irrigation water along with maintaining an optimum groundwater level. Once we better manage the soil water, we will not only be able to reclaim the saline or saline sodic areas but can prevent the future spread of these problems too.